since chapter 237, Kenji Akari is still fighting Yurame. As of recording this video, it's been nearly 20 chapters. While we've barely seen these two, they're technically going to be the longest ongoing fight in the series in just a couple weeks. We've yet to get a single chapter just dedicated to this matchup, and it's one that we'd all love to see. Can Yurame's ice melt down Kenji Akari's fever? Because that's a pretty good question. While their one fight is going on, Sukuna has fought Kashimo, Higuruma, Yuta, Maki, and even Kusakabe, and now is currently about to go fight Miguel and the rest of the crew. We've actually only seen Hikari and Yurame go up against each other combat-wise once throughout their entire fight. But what doesn't really make sense is that the one time that we actually do see them combat each other, Hikari seems to be slamming Yurame. Hikari threw Yurame all across the city and even through buildings. While it's important to keep in mind that this is before Yurame has apparently gone all out, it does beg the question. Why is Hikari even after hitting one jackpot and showing that he's capable of throwing Yurame all throughout Shinjuku, or Yurame, who's now apparently going all out and still standing against that same Akari, unable to finish this fight. I'll go over everything you need to know about Kenji Akari's fight with Yurame, and why this fight has been prolonged for so many chapters, and why both of them seem to be unable to finish the other off. If you would like to see more content like this, please make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel, and drop some video ideas you want to see be done down below. So just like I said before, Hikari and Yurame originally began fighting on chapter 237, and as of recording this video, we're nearing chapter 256. But obviously chapter numbers don't really speak to the length of a fight. It's possible to cover a 30 minute fight in one chapter, the same way it's possible to cover a 5 minute fight in one chapter. But regardless of how many chapters this fight has actually been going on for, I don't really believe it's been going on for such a short period of time, considering all of the things that have been happening in the background. It's possible that all these things happened in a couple minutes, but I highly doubt it. When Akari first jumps into Shinjuku, he immediately starts by expanding his domain, Idle Death Gamble. We don't really know at all what happened inside the domain. We're not given any information or insight whatsoever, but it's really more of what happens after this domain closes and finishes that we begin to get a couple clues. Skipping from chapter 237 all the way until chapter 245, that's the only time in the next 8 chapters that you really get to see Hikari vs Yurame, but there's definitely a lot to gather from just these couple pages. The first and most blatant thing is that Akari is now finally back in Jackpot. You can find music notes coming off of Akari and it's a clear indication of Jackpot. When Akari manages to land a Jackpot, it comes with its own theme song. The song lasts about 4 minutes and 11 seconds, which is also how long Hikari can actually maintain Jackpot mode. The first time Jackpot mode began to end against Kashimo, Kashimo says that the music ending and the flow of cursed energy begins to slow down at the same time, which could imply that the intensity of the music also controls the intensity of the cursed energy and how fast the cursed energy is actually flowing throughout Akari's body. But more importantly, while Akari is in Jackpot right here, it's like he has complete control over the fight. Yurame seems to be the one that's clearly getting knocked around. Between getting slammed through buildings and facing an RCT dropkick, Yurame has just been getting beaten up. But it's also equally important to remember that this is all before Yurame has apparently gone all out. Yurame comes to the realization that Akari is worth it and decides that it's time to destroy him with the full extent of their power. But after this moment, we really don't get to see Akari versus Yurame at all. If we jump all the way until chapter 252, we can see Akari and Yurame, but they're not really fighting. They're actually just having a conversation about the battle that they're not a part of. The only reason why Hikari is even fighting Yurame in the first place is because Hikari promised Kashimo that he would get the opportunity to fight Sukuna. And Kashimo has definitely made it more than clear that he doesn't want anybody interfering during his battle with Sukuna. Hikari made sure to take on Yurame to avoid Yurame third partying and taking on really anybody else that was there to fight Sukuna. That honestly does make perfect sense with why in chapter 252, Hikari and Yurame seem to be at an entirely different point in the city compared to Sukuna, Yuta, Maki, and Yuji. Both Hikari and Yurame seem to be way more scuffed up than they were back in chapter 245. The entire city seems to be covered in ice. Yurame has this ice ball around them, which is possibly the thing that they created when they said that they were going to go all out back in chapter 245. You also can't see any music notes surrounding Akari anymore. This could be an indicator that he's out of jackpot. There are times that he's in jackpot and we don't see any music notes, but that doesn't make it impossible that from start to finish, all 4 minutes and 11 seconds of the round have already played out, which would mean that Akari is now sitting here in base. It's completely possible that his face is just frozen, but there also seems to be some damage done, which obviously if he was in jackpot wouldn't at all make sense because his reverse curse technique is supposed to be fully automatic, but it's honestly up for your own interpretation. But beyond everything I've mentioned and beyond everything we've seen so far, nothing really explains why this fight is still going on. Or actually, maybe it does. If we stop and think about both of these fighters individually, one thing becomes clear. This fight is clearly a mismatch. If you were to give both Yurame and Hikari their own individual categories, category for 
fighting style, they would both specialize in two completely different variations of combat. Saying Hikari specializes in hand-to-hand -hand combat is an understatement. He only fights in close quarters combat. Hikari doesn't have any mid-range or long-range attacks whatsoever. If he can't punch, kick, or grab you, you really have nothing to worry about. So in theory, if it is a mismatch, it should be leading into Yurame's favor, but that's obviously not the case. And the reason why is actually pretty simple. There's more to Kinji Akari than just being a hand-to-hand -hand base fighter. While Yurame using their curse technique can definitely keep the mid-range, it's not much of a problem for Akari to close that distance. This is blatantly true and even depicted way back when they fought in chapter 245. The fight in Shinjuku originally started off after the domain closed, with Yurame using Frostcom to freeze off Kinji Akari's hand. When they got ready with a secondary ice attack to follow up with that Frostcom, we see Akari has no problem charging in at Yurame. When Yurame tries to double back after getting slammed through buildings, they get ready with some sort of large icicle to throw at Akari, and even when Yurame throws the icicle at Akari, he can still keep charging forward. So even when Yurame, whose specialty is fighting in the mid-range, tries to use those mid-range attacks to keep Akari away, none of them work at all. Yurame even says themselves that Akari will just keep coming. Even when Yurame does try to compete in that close quarter setting by freezing Akari's foot and breaking it off, Akari regrows it anyways and that's when there's that RCT drop kick that I mentioned earlier. So even when Yurame tries to create distance by either using mid-range abilities to keep Akari back or by simply doubling back themselves, nothing seems to be capable of stopping this monster. Yurame's biggest problem is obviously facing jackpot mode, because as we all know, when Akari lands a jackpot, he gets fully automatic reverse curse technique. Since being in jackpot mode gives Akari an infinite amount of cursed energy volume, which in itself is a pretty insane thing, in order to prevent his body from literally breaking apart from the amount of cursed energy he gets, it results in fully automatic reverse curse technique. And despite never actually learning how to perform reverse curse technique himself, this technically made Akari one of the best reverse curse technique users in the entire series. Even when taking into account Gojo and Sukuna, Hikari has the fastest RCT in the entire series. Whenever he fought Kashimo, Hikari does a similar thing to what he's doing to Yurame now. When Kashimo uses a mid-ranged ability to keep Hikari back by blowing off his arm, Hikari still continues to fight back. Even when getting hit with a lightning bolt straight to the head, Hikari still survives because his brain is actually capable of healing while it breaks. Normally, the best way to unalive a reverse curse technique user is by going for their brain because you need your head to direct the reverse curse technique. So there's really only one way to shut down Jackpot besides waiting out Akari, and it's by destroying his head in one blow. Judging by what we've seen so far, Yurame clearly hasn't been able to make use of this strategy. When we cut back to chapter 252, most of the damage or ice however you interpret it on Akari seems to be above his chest. There's an entire block of ice on one of his shoulders and his face is clearly frozen or scuffed. Whether you think this is damage or ice being frozen on Akari's face, it doesn't change the fact that Yurame has clearly been going for his head and it hasn't been working, and we know this for a fact because if you couldn't tell, Hikari is still standing and very much alive. So if Yurame clearly can't unalive Hikari and Hikari can close the distance on Yurame, why isn't the fight over? You see, there's an answer to that too. Yurame isn't just an incompatible opponent for Hikari, but Hikari is also an incompatible opponent for Yurame it seems. Before Yurame began to go all out, the biggest problem that they faced was not actually being able to keep that distance with Hikari. But in chapter 252, that doesn't really seem to be the case. From the way I see it, this is the most likely interpretation for why Yurame and Akari's fight is still going on. Whatever Yurame did when they decided that it was time to go all out has clearly been keeping the distance from Akari. Remember, as long as you put space between yourself and Akari, even if he's in jackpot, if he can't punch, grab, or kick you, he's really not a threat. He can throw game pieces at you from his overall technique, like train doors or even pinballs, but I highly doubt any of those are capable of taking down Yurame. I won't pretend like there's some insane gap between Akari and Yurame when it comes to distance in chapter 252, but I will say that the distance is a lot farther than it was in chapter 245. Whatever happened when Yurame decided to go all out is the reason why they're able to keep the distance with Kinji Akari. Judging by the damage or ice that seems to be coming off of Akari's shoulders and onto his head, it doesn't seem like Yurame actually has a way to finish off Akari. And because Akari can't get close, he also has no way to finish off Yurame. It also explains why the city seems to be engulfed in ice. Akari has probably just been chasing after Yurame, while Yurame continues to create distance. Here and there probably throwing in some attacks that might be able to finish off Akari, but clearly haven't worked, which is why he has this residual damage. They're two very cool sorcerers, and it's a very cool matchup in general, but it's no wonder why it's been dragged on for just so long. Going forward now understanding that they're probably at a stalemate, what exactly is supposed 
supposed to happen next? They're obviously not going to be fighting forever, so what's exactly supposed to change? Normally when two opponents reach the point where they're at a stalemate, what they want is a new variable, something unforeseen outside of the fight. This is what's verbatim said by the narrator before Dido enters the fight with Maki, Kamo, and Aoya. Giving Dido the soul split katana was the unforeseen variable that changed the entire fight. It broke the stalemate that the three had before Dido arrived. Another perfect example is Yuta in Sendai Colony. Before, Ryu, Oro, and Kurushi were all in a stalemate, but when Yuta arrived as the unknown variable that was unforeseen outside the battle, he ended up breaking the stalemate in Sendai Colony. In order for Akari and Yurame to break the current stalemate, they're gonna have to introduce some unknown variable that we haven't seen yet and that is currently outside of the fight, just like Yuta entering Sendai Colony and Daido with the Soul Split Katana. Now what exactly is gonna be this new variable? We don't really know at all, and we don't really have any clues either. Instead of betting on some third person to show up like Yuta and Daido, I think the more likely to bet on for a new variable would be that one of them is hiding something in their arsenal that the other hasn't seen yet. The main reason why I don't think this variable is going to be another person is because if anybody's showing up to fight, they're going to go fight Sukuna. They're not going to go fight Yurame or Hakari. Between both Hakari and Yurame, the one to be holding something back that the other hasn't seen yet would probably be Yurame. There really just isn't any room in Hakari's arsenal to be speculating for a new technique. His curse technique primarily only has one function. Function. By default, the technique comes with his domain expansion, Idle Death Gamble, and the game that we see Hakari play inside of his domain seems to be the only purpose for the technique's existence. When it comes to Hakari finding some sort of extension technique from his original curse technique, I just don't think it's very likely. There just isn't a lot of room to add to something like Jackpot. Jackpot mode already gives Hakari infinite cursed energy and the fastest form of reverse curse technique that we've ever seen. I don't want to say it's impossible that in the future we might see Hakari make a binding vow that either lets him hit more Jackpot consistently or just land jackpots faster, but getting into the jackpot mode itself really isn't Hakari's problem. He already was at least once or still is in jackpot mode while the stalemate was going on, but I don't think that dismisses the idea of binding vows in general. Hakari has shown the ability to make spur of the moment binding vows, especially to win fights, but considering a decision like that and what exactly would be traded off is completely in Hakari's hands, there's really nothing we can speculate. But again, like I said earlier, if we did see another technique to act as this new variable to break the stalemate, I think we would see it from Yurame. There's just more potential in extension techniques and other variables to come out of Yurame's curse technique compared to Akari. But really, the biggest part that makes me think that Yurame actually isn't holding something back is the obvious fact that Yurame's already said that they're done holding back their power and that they're now fully ready to go all out. Many people online across Twitter and my comment section have been speculating if Yurame might have a maximum technique or some form of domain expansion, but out of those two, domain expansion, I highly doubt. When Yurame is first getting trapped inside Hakari's domain, they proceed to use Frostcom. What's really weird about this is that Yurame shouldn't know anything about Hakari's domain. Normally, you don't have to counter expand the domain against Hakari because it's not lethal. But again, Yurame doesn't know that. So either Yurame has a domain and specifically chose not to use the domain, despite getting entrapped inside of Hakari's domain, even though domains are meant to be used counteractive to each other, and is just maybe a little bit slow, or Yurame just doesn't have a domain expansion. The bottom line of what I'm saying is that if they had their own domain, they would have probably used it by now. But again, I don't think it's impossible, and I'm not saying that there is just no way Yurame has a domain expansion, I just don't think it's very likely. Overall, enough with the theorizing. They're gonna need another variable to break their current stalemate. Like I've been saying for this entire video, this fight was a mismatch from the start. I really don't know what you guys expected from the strictly mid-range fighter against the guy who's just hand-to-hand -hand combat, who for most of the fight ends up being immortal. 